Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Friday, sort of lunchtime here in Australia. So again, sort of you know Thursday evening stateside time. So the weekend is sort of upon us, and we can see that there has been a pullback, as pretty much every weekend of late there is, <laughs> yeah, a definite pullback. And look, it may not be over yet. That's what we need to sort of keep in mind. But we'll have a look at that shortly. Let's just see how the market's doing. All right, BTC dominance continues to drop, so now down to 44%. Again, people jumping into altcoins and, you know, maybe too early. We'll have to wait and see because as we can see, the ETH dominance is rising. Gas prices have come down from sort of 16, 20 something. I think they were around about 20 down to 12, which is not too bad. But now let's have a look how quickly this all changes. It was green yesterday and then it's red and then it's green and then it's red. The market is literally choppy at the moment. And unfortunately, when the market's like this, the altcoins are the ones that get hammered the worst. So as I've said in my previous videos, please be careful investing uh, in altcoins at the moment. But again, that's not financial advice. I can't offer you that. But it is just my personal opinion. And again, as I've said before, it's not that I'm not putting any money into altcoins, but I'm really just focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment because they're generally holding not too bad altcoins you know they'll go up a little bit today but then they'll go down a little bit more tomorrow then they'll go up the day after that and then they'll go down a little bit more from there i mean some of them feel like they've found a bottom but just yeah at the moment be very very careful would be my personal uh, opinion all right so let's have a look we can see you know a lot of red it's you know it's not looking pretty some of the seven day stuff not too bad but 24 hour not looking good and not even the hour Right, so let's have a look. Has anything done well in the last 24 hours since we looked at it yesterday? Top 100, that is. Right, NEAR's done all right. We've got an 8% move, but it's still, again, it's really just chopped about. Over the last seven days, it's only up 0.4 of a percent. So XDC Network, so doing all right. They're having a good run. Uh, Hedera Hashgraph, Stax, uh, Helium, and then we're just into the stable coins and things like that. So, well... I mean, there's waves there as well. That's not a stable coin, but yeah, really. Then we get into the stable coin. So very minimal sort of gains there, particularly in the last 24 hours. Hence why the market cap overall is down. And I think, again, a lot of market manipulation going on at the moment. I do get the feeling like we're going to travel sideways for a long time. And it's going to be up and it's going to be down. And they are going to try and shake out everyone. Uh, that they possibly can now this is not just sort of institutions a lot of this is institutions but it's whales that have been here before you just got to have a look at all the bullish news that's happening and all these big companies that are coming in and setting up infrastructure around it they're aware what's about to happen they don't want to sell too much of this stuff so they are literally going to try and accumulate as many as they can which is they're going to short the backside out of the market when everyone's going long and they're going to long the market when everyone's going short that's just what they're going to do until there's basically no money to be made in longing and shorting anymore all the you know speculative traders are basically gone and not all of them but as many as they can that's when they will just leave it alone set their longs and then they'll watch the price just go you know sky high when that's going to happen oh, who knows but i do get the feeling like we're going to jump around for you know long enough to get rid of anyone who's not a legit crypto head uh, and for me, that's why I prefer to be an investor rather than uh, a trader. Again, I do a little bit of trading, not too much, but I invest and it has done me well so far. And I think, you know, Bitcoin is a good buy at this price. Ethereum, yeah, again, we'll have to wait and see. I am putting money into Ethereum. And again, don't get me wrong, I like the price of these alts, but I just don't like them when Bitcoin is so volatile. Altcoins do well when Bitcoin does well, and altcoins do the best when Bitcoin gets to a peak and then sort of starts to level off, and it hasn't got to a peak, it's dropped to a low. So that's a little bit different. And, you know, again, people are really nervous in the markets. So, yeah, we do need to be careful with that. All right, so what about losses? This could be interesting. What's got, you know, knocked around a little bit in the last 24 hours? All right, Telecoin, Theta Fuel, taking a bit of a beating there. 
Bitcoin, gold, Aave, there we go. But they're still up uh, 7% for seven days. But again, if Bitcoin continues to just chop around, I do expect all these altcoins to continue to go lower, unfortunately. You know, Bitcoin can kind of sit around sort of 31, 32,000, but, you know, jumped up to 38, dropped down to, you know, 30,000, 29,500 and keep chopping in and around there. And it'll just absolutely ruin the altcoin so yes be very very careful but look no losses that are really horrible i mean don't get me wrong 14 percent is not great but over seven days it's basically just traveled sideways and again there were a few gains in there but you know the market has been the same for quite some time now so let's go and have a look that's the market let's have a look at some chart analysis i should say so again we've been chopping around in this range predominantly since 30th of December, well, not predominantly, because we were above it for a while where we chopped uh, around. But anyway, we've definitely been chopping around here since, what is that, the 19th of May. So we are starting to get towards two months of that going on. And again, I do suspect that we just keep chopping around. But look, there is some good news. We had that fake out, drop below, retested it, drop below. We've had a breakout and so far, it is coming back and just retesting this downward trend line. So look, that's what would be good for Bitcoin and the market in general. If we can keep, you know, coming and retesting this line and not dropping below it, then that's going to be, you know, sort of bullish. We still have to wait and see because if it keeps testing it on the way down, then we still do have a downward trending market. And that's what we need to be careful of. Careful of. But again, all I see is Bitcoin was once $64,000. So if I can pick it up for $33,000, I'm happy to do so. But I do it knowing that, hey, we might see some more downside. And again, it could be some significant downside. And again, we'll just have a quick look because I've done this before. This is probably where we're going to come down to is around this $28,000 level. And if that doesn't hold, then really we're looking at kind of, yeah, unfortunately the $24,000, $22,000 mark for any real kind of support. And then, ugh things get ugly. We start to come down to $20,000 and look, maybe we even go lower. But again, that says that we are legitimately in a sort of bear market. I don't believe we are, so I'm not too concerned at the moment, but it is scary to think that that could happen, particularly for anyone who's new in the space. And unfortunately, a lot of the new people have all bought here above $42,000 and uh, if they haven't sold already, they're probably definitely questioning themselves quite hard about do they have the stomach to stay in this and watch their, you know, investment maybe drop another 50%, you know, in Bitcoin and in all the other altcoins, probably even more, maybe even another 60 to 80% uh, in their altcoins from where they are. Ugh, scary. All right. So what I want to look at is a lot of people are calling this a Wyckoff accumulation. <sighs> Look, it, it still could be, but technically, textbook I should say, it has differed from it slightly. So what we can see is we've chopped down, chopped up and down, and then we hit this spring, and now from here, we're really supposed to travel sideways a bit before we go back up. And we can show that over here. So this is where we were, and this chart was uh, done on the 29th. So it was only a few days ago, but you can see we're supposed to chop up and down, before we then spring up and they show that you know how it is marrying up with the current charts and we can see that they're not exact though so at the moment though we weren't really supposed to break down we have broken down because this is back on the 29th so it was around about here so technically I guess we could sort of chop sideways here for a while before we move back up but the thing we need to remember is that they are never exactly as they sort of appear like Wyckoffs aren't exactly like that they're just somewhere thereabouts and we also need to remember that the big players are aware that we are all thinking this is a Wyckoff accumulation that doesn't mean they're not playing it as a Wyckoff accumulation because they've probably worked out that you know anyone new to the crypto space probably doesn't quite know this yet and it's just the old heads who are looking at it going well I'm not leverage trading anyway I'm simply buying and holding so they're not really trying to use Wyckoff accumulation to shake out investors. They're trying to do it, well, not older investors anyway, they're doing the Wyckoff accumulation and distribution to shake out new investors who haven't been around long enough and predominantly 
a lot of the traders so they can make more Bitcoin. So for me, again, I just like to buy and hold. That's kind of my thing. And that's what I plan to keep on doing. All right, let's move on. Some interesting news. All right, Mike Novogratz. He thinks Bitcoin will be the digital version of gold for the next 3,000 years. That's probably beyond our lifetime, but hey, maybe something new comes up in the medical industry that means we can survive that long. But he says ETH might surpass it to become the largest cryptocurrency. I think there's a high probability of that, a very high probability. But it is all based on can Ethereum get ETH 2.0 rolled out and can it be exactly what it's supposed to be? This massive you know, chain that supports all sorts of smart contracts, you know, low gas fees and no kind of, you know, real issues. I think if that happens, absolutely, uh, Ethereum will. I don't think it's going to be overnight. I think it's still going to take a while. But unless Bitcoin can get, you know, smart contracts going on it, and it's got its own issues in scaling and all the rest of it, and they don't want it on the main chain, and look, a lot of stuff is going to be off the Ethereum main chain as well, i.e., you know, layer two solutions and sharding and all the rest of it. But I really think Ethereum's just got such a head start that it'd be hard for Bitcoin to catch it. And really, the only way Bitcoin could surpass it in that regards, smart contracts, is if Ethereum failed and then Bitcoin could capitalize on that. But really, if Ethereum fails, Bitcoin's still going to be hard up trying to catch Cardano and Polkadot and Solana and things like that. So I think Bitcoin will have a hard time uh, getting the smart contract space, I think it's, you know, its main thing now is a store of value. doesn't mean it can't change in the future, but I, I think they're just too far behind at the moment to really capitalise on that. They were so, you know, the Bitcoin maximalists and that were so absolute about, no, we don't want anything to do with that. And now they've, you know, seen the light sort of a little bit too late. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see. But I, I definitely think if Ethereum rolls out the way it's supposed to, uh, and sooner rather than later, I don't think we can wait another five years. I think Ethereum would uh, have some really big issues. But definitely within kind of, you know, this year to maybe next year. After next year, I just think, you know, things like, again, Polkadot, Cardano and that are just going to straight up outstrip ETH. But if ETH can do what it's supposed to do in the next, let's say, sort of 18 months, yeah, I, th I think that's it. I think ETH will be an absolute behemoth. Hence why I've got myself a good position in ETH. All right, Balancer. So they're now on Polygon. Everybody is basically moving to Polygon at the moment. All the big kind of plays really are kind of heading there. Now, not all of them, well, I shouldn't say all of them because that's not true, but a lot of them are. I mean, Uniswap hasn't, uh, Synthetics Network hasn't. They've gone to Arbitrum uh, and optimistic roll-ups and things like that, which are on their way as well. But striving to reduce gas fees for its users, Balancer Protocol has announced the launch of its network on top of the Layer 2 solution Polygon. So again, I'm so glad I invested in Polygon and again for around two cents and I'm so glad I held and I never sold because there were times when uh, it was down uh, well under the price I bought. So it was down nearly a cent, not quite, but thereabouts uh, at times and I was constantly questioning myself, I should just sell this, this isn't doing well, but I held and now it is by far um, my best performer, well and truly. All right, moving on. Investment app with over 600,000 users looking to offer crypto services. So again, I take these stories into account because yes, the market is not doing any amazing things at the moment. But like I said, whenever you're getting lots of positive news, but sort of negative price flow, that usually t says that there's probably some manipulation going on to keep it down because there's all this positive news. Things are coming, things are coming. But the big players aren't ready for the prices to spike yet. They're still trying to, you know, get themselves set and get their positions. And it is like that. They know how to get in and manipulate markets to keep things low and get themselves set before they are then happy to let it go. And that's all I see in these news stories. So again, price not doing much. But here, nearly nearly 30 billion of assets under management and over 600,000 customers. Betterment is now looking to provide crypto services. Now, Sarah Levy, the CEO of the investment app uh, Betterment, 
revealed that the company is contemplating how to enable its users to interact with cryptocurrencies. The executive admitted that she is a big fan of digital assets and that they have the ability to diversify the investor's portfolio. Cryptocurrencies, you know, I can't believe people would still doubt it. Now, don't get me wrong, not all cryptocurrencies will be here. I think there's, you know, well over 5,000, 10,000 cryptocurrencies. I think there might be 100 or maybe 200 that'll actually have real world sort of use. And then a lot of those are still only going to have small world uses. They're going to be too specialized to really, you know, bring in the big canes. It's the ones that, you know, take kind of holistic overall approaches and do well that will likely see the biggest returns and eat up the market share, you know like Apple and Google and Netflix and things like that. All right, Marketplace backed by Mark Cuban raises 13 million in Series A funding. So this is mintable. So Mark Cuban's put some money into this and yeah, same thing, the NFT space, I think it's going to be massive. It's just so hard to know. There's a ton of different NFT things out there already to know which ones are going to be the one. So again, for me, I really like Engine. Uh, I was in Decentraland and I sold for a profit and got out. I really want to try and find myself another uh, entry point there. I'm also in Super Farm, uh, Chili's. But again, there's no guarantees that any of those will do well. But I think Engine is probably my best bet in those regards. Uh, you know, more the gaming, but also NFTs. But look, hey, Mark Cuban's a pretty smart dude. And if he's put money into Mintable, then... Uh, good chance it might do well. Not guaranteed though. He did put money into Iron Finance, so we need to be careful there. All right, but again, look at all these you know positive news stories that are coming out for the space. Yet people are getting a bit caught up in oh you know the prices could go down. Yeah, they could. But with all this bullish stuff going on, that tells you that you just need to be here for more than five minutes. You know, and you're probably going to do. You know, make more money than you could have imagined, still based on how much you put in. You know, if you put in five dollars, you're not going to make millions of dollars, but you probably turn that five dollars into fifty dollars or five hundred dollars, and really, you know, kind of yeah, blow your hair back as they would say. <laughs> but it's just not going to happen overnight. You know, crypto, the gains are unbelievable, but they generally take somewhere like about a year. You got to get in at the right time. So, i.e., in about a year to eighteen months, you can make life-changing wealth if you got in basically right at the bottom of the bear market and continued to invest sort of right through to now. Yet, yet you can make really good gains. But if you get in late in the bull market, which I think we are kind of now, you're probably more likely to lose money in the not too distant future. But if you can continue to hold and dollar cost average in, then the next bull cycle. Whew, that's where you're going to really, yeah, have your face melted, as I'd say. So, Scaramucci Skybridge Capital to launch private Ethereum fund. The firm also plans to apply for an Ethereum ETF. Again, another very smart guy who was part of the Trump administration, whether that makes him smart or not, <laughs> you know, isn't really uh, where we're going with this. But look, he is a very smart guy. Uh, Skybridge Capital, very big firm, and they have gone heavy into the crypto space really heavy bitcoin etfs you know ethereum etfs you know all sorts of stuff and it is all these big big companies are really starting to just pour ridiculous amounts of money into the space and what you got to remember is they're not just coming out and simply buying ethereum and bitcoin like they are buying some but they are building the 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 platforms that all this stuff is going to kind of launch off. That's where they're looking to make the most amount of money. Don't get me wrong, they still need to buy Ethereum and they need to buy Bitcoin and all the rest of it, but they are literally building the platforms for this stuff to be, you know, again, launched, you know, to the masses. And that's where they will make the real amount of money. And it's not until those platforms are done and then the offerings can suddenly be passed on, you know, like, all right, go to Skybridge Capital to buy your Ethereum and they'll hold it for you and blah, blah, whatever it is Skybridge is going to do. It's not until they're ready and all these other big companies are ready and then they can offer it to the masses that we're really going to see the huge price explosions. And that still may be, you know, another cycle away. It's not to say we won't have a peak, but maybe, you know, the real big kind of crazy moves Again, is that worldwide adoption? We may still be a cycle or two away from that. Time will tell.
All right, Robinhood. So they reveal they have $11.6 billion in crypto holdings ahead of their landmark IPO. Now, this was delayed because I think it was the SEC or somebody, some regulatory body uh, was, you know, worried about their crypto services and things like that. But it seems they've kind of got past that and they are ready to go to the IPO. Now, I don't use Robinhood and I don't like what they're about, you know, from all the information that I've heard that they were selling their market data to the big players to counter trade against the little guys who, you know, basically made Robinhood what they are. Now, again, this is only what I've heard. I don't have, you know, physical, I haven't seen the evidence myself, but I heard that they were doing that. And so that puts me off. But also something else that puts me off. So they got $11.6 billion in crypto holdings ahead of their IPO. And a lot of people are probably thinking, I want to invest in it. And look, it could be a great investment. Robinhood warns its crypto business is heavily reliant on Dogecoin. Dogecoin has taken a bit of a beating, but so have many cryptos. But they are heavily reliant on Dogecoin. That has me worried and makes me think, oh, even if I was a Robin Hood fan, I would be somewhat concerned that, you know, again, most of their business is reliant on Dogecoin. If Dogecoin suddenly fails and, you know, just doesn't do well and doesn't go to the all-time highs that, you know, it made before and higher, then that's really not going to be great for Robin Hood. So buyer beware. All right, more sort of... NFT space news and one of the projects I was talking about engine so engines EFI token sale nets 20 million as NFT aspirations grow so EFI is the native cryptocurrency of infinity a polka dot based parachain developed by engine the token sale which was open to retail investors sold out in just two and a half hours so that was very very quick Now, Infinity has been designed to support both fungible and non-fungible tokens from any blockchain. It boasts an estimated 1,000 transactions per second, which means it has the potential to solve the cost and speed uh, constraints of existing NFT uh, and Ether-based protocols. So again, this is now based on uh, the Polkadot. Uh, network. So again, that bodes well for the Polkadot network. I mean, they're still getting their parachain sorted out for Kasama. Then they've got to get their parachain sorted out for uh, Polkadot, the main chain themselves. So again, you know, when you're investing in things like Polkadot, you know, Cardano, Ethereum, all those kind of things, you really need to consider yourself like an early VC investor. These aren't finished projects. We don't know that they can do what they say they're going to do yet. You're basically getting in on a good sales pitch, sort of. Otherwise, you wouldn't be putting your money in unless you're just sort of gambling and throwing your money at anything. But you've heard a pitch and, you know, these promises of what they're going to do and you've gone, yep, I'm going to put some money into that. But there's no guarantees that they will live up for it, live up to it. Polkadot, not a finished project. Cardano, not a finished project. Ethereum, not a finished project. Really, the only kind of what I would say is kind of finished project uh, that you know you could call of cryptocurrencies really would be sort of Bitcoin and Litecoin. You know, uh, you know, I suppose sort of XRP as well. You know, love hate XRP, whatever. They are kind of finished projects, but they are also expanding and still building. So you know. When it comes to this kind of space, you don't want them to ever be what we would call a finished project because that means they don't think they can be any better and do any better. So they're never totally finished, but they would probably be the three that I would consider, you know, the closest to being finished projects. They're still, you know, trying to improve, but yeah, they're closer to finished and again, than you know, things like uh, Ethereum and that. But again, I, I like all of these. Engine, that's my number one sort of, you know, gaming you know, NFT kind of play. They've been around for a long time. They've got lots of things happening in the gaming world. And again, now moving into NFTs and, you know, going multi-chain, not just going to, you know, not just based on the Ethereum chain. So good for them. All right. Last one, but not least. So esports organization FaZe Clan drops one of their member and suspends three following alleged crypto scam. Oh, this, this doesn't, you know, 
doesn't really help anyone except for, I guess, the scammers. But anyway, they need to be caught and dealt with. So accusations are stemming from the members' purported propo- uh, promotion of the project Save the Kids and its token, where they were reportedly paid to promote the altcoin before dumping their investments onto the market. Now, it wasn't the entire team. It was just certain members. So here, where does it say... Right, according to a statement from the organisation on Thursday, Fraser K. Katari, hopefully I said that right, uh, Katri, sorry, has gotten the boot while Jarvis uh, Katri, uh, Nikan Nadim and Jacob Tico, I don't even know how to say that, have been suspended until further notice. So, you know, there's so much money to be made in crypto. Why get involved in scams? You know, people just... Too often they're looking for the super easiest, you know, option, and usually the easiest option isn't the best option, because if it was that easy to just make millions and dollars and lots of money, everyone would be doing it, and then all of a sudden it just, you know, it just doesn't work that way. You gotta, you know, kind of do the the stress test on things. You know what I mean? And you know, go through the ups and downs and the trials and tribulations. For it to be real, you know, wealth that's going to stick around, you know, people getting involved in this kind of stuff. I mean, it just, you know, it says everything about them. And again, it is not the esports organization FaZe Clan. It was just a couple of their members. So definitely not saying FaZe Clan is dodgy, but unfortunately they had some, you know, some members or at least one man, member guaranteed to have done something dodgy and three others that may possibly have also done the same. All right, look, that's it from me. So the weekend's here. I think we're going to go down lower in all fairness. And again, this, you know, Wyckoff accumulation, it could be. But again, a lot of people know it is, so it may just not be. Because technically, you know, if it's pinpoint text perfect, and we can already see that this hasn't quite been, we should be ranging sideways for a while before we all of a sudden break up and get above, you know, 42,000, come back and retest, you know, roughly. It doesn't have to be thereabouts, 40,000 before we start making our way to new all-time highs. So far, that's not happening because we can go here and I get the feeling like we're going to have a bit of a pump tomorrow and then a bit of a sell-off. I think the big sell-off will sort of, well, not the big sell-off, but, you know, the kind of bottom will probably come somewhere around about, you know, Saturday stateside time and sort of Sunday uh, Australian time. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the market and that's the news that I found. Hopefully you found it interesting. Please go and hit that like and subscribe subscribe button. Uh, if you like my content, really helps me get my content out there. Uh, I am, you know, what they would call a struggling YouTuber. Definitely not making any money or anything like that. And I really want to you know, continue to do this. I enjoy just talking about it. So even if the channel doesn't do well, I'm just going to keep doing it for fun anyway. But it would be good if you could, you know, join me uh, on this kind of mission to get this information out there and help other people maybe change their lives in this space as well. And if not change their lives, just get educated. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but if you are, congratulations to you. You outsmarted the market. And I'll see you next time.